G'day everyone, today I'm going to show how you, for free or very cheap, can exclude the draft that comes through your roller door. Roller doors are a useful product for people who, like myself, have got low ceilings in the garages that are often underneath their homes. The roller door rolls up into a compact space, which means that you don't have to have it slide underneath, cutting the headspace as you would with a panel lift door. But they bring with them some challenges. Chief among those challenges is the fact that it is a little bit difficult from the factory to seal the top of the garage door. You can see, well, I'm not sure if you can see over the top there, but there is a sizable gap. You can see from the light coming through at the top with a smaller gap around the sides that will allow air to flow in, especially when there's a breeze and push dust into your garage. If you have a nice car or things that you don't want to get dusty, this can be a real problem. And Unless you're planning on covering everything in here in plastic, which I'm certainly not, you might want to think about solutions to keep the draft out. You can see from the outside of my door just how big that gap is. And by cutting it down, at least across the top of the door, we should be able to exclude the vast majority of dust from getting into the garage and getting on my car. There are a number of commercial products you can buy that claim to do the job, some of which are shown here, but if you're like me, a little bit enterprising, with a bit of work and a few materials that you probably have lying around your house, you can do the same job for basically no money at all. So here's pretty well everything that you're going to need for the job. Most importantly, you want a piece of carpet, and this is where it's the make or break as to whether or not it's going to be free or you're going to have to do some work or go out and buy something. If you're fortunate, you'll have an old roll of carpet laying around somewhere that you can cut up to do this job. It's excellent because it's a sound deadening material, it will exclude dust, it will conform to the garage door as it rolls up and down. It's easy to fix and it's quite solid and hardy. You're also going to need a staple gun just to help tack it up, some wood offcuts to help brace the carpet against the timber or the masonry, the step ladder, the drill, impact driver, some appropriate screws, whether that be wood or masonry screws, tape measure, a Stanley knife to help cut the carpet, and we're ready to crack on. It is at this point, however, that you may wish to consider aesthetics, or at least ask your wife. If you're fortunate like me, your garage sits below the level of the street. Now where we're going to be installing the carpet is going to be basically out of sight for anyone except someone who is walking through the garage door, which is probably yourself, and you probably don't mind what the carpet looks like. But if you happen to live above the level of the street, it's quite possible that the carpet, and here's one that I prepared earlier, may be visible to people walking past. It's up to you whether you consider this good enough for your house or whether you need to find something else. Maybe just a nicer looking piece of carpet. Now I find the best way to start is by cutting yourself a small offcut that's easy to work with of carpet. And we're gonna use this to measure how long we have to cut the rest of the carpet to be able to fix to this, drape over the door, and then attach to the other side. Now luckily I've got wood to fix into, which means I can grab this staple gun and simply tack it up there. Then I would measure any excess that I have off here, cut it off, and then I've got the length, the length that I can cut the rest of my carpet to. Now when you are doing this, it is quite important to know that the carpet is actually resting on the top of the garage door and has a bit of slack in it because remember, as we roll this door up, this is going to grow bigger and if this is pulled too taut, it will want to either put pressure on the garage door, which could damage it, or pull out your fixings. So make sure you've just got enough slack there for the carpet to mold itself to the shape of the door. Now you may have noticed that I have a bit of an odd arrangement here where a previous owner has tacked on about a metre at the front to extend the length of the garage. This here is actually the uh, the wall of the house and this part goes forward. So for most of you, your garage door is going to be about here. But keep in mind, we still have these joists to fix to. And even if you have a finished ceiling, 
it wouldn't be too hard for you to use a stud finder to find out where the joists are underneath and then fix the carpet via the, the scrap timber uh, that we're holding it on with to your ceiling in that way. The next step is to use your Stanley knife and cut out your carpet to the required size. Now we know the length, but the width is basically just the width of the portal of your garage door when it's open. I've already done it. Now following this, we want to get our carpet that we've cut and jam it over the top of the door. I find it's easy to do this when the door is closed because there's more space to help you push the carpet through. Not all the way though, just let it hang evenly over both sides. The thing to do after this is then go around the other side and make sure that we've properly balanced the carpet and that, will, that it will reach the other side. But after that, this is where the staple gun comes in handy. We simply start from the centre and start tacking our carpet in place. Of course, working backwards never makes for ideal conditions. The reason we start from the centre and work our way out is so that any slack finds its way to the outside rather than the other way around. Now by fixing to the inside of this beam, we keep the carpet hidden from the view from the front. The next thing we can do is go ahead and do the same thing on the inside. Oh, you might want to clean your carpet first, otherwise you'll get an eye full of sand, as I just did. Now it could well be said that if you have a bradder and some galvanised brad nails and you wanted to put in a whole heap of them, this might be all you actually have to do. And you don't need to proceed with the timber at all, but not all of us have the bradder or the nails. So the timber is what I'm going to demonstrate. So the next thing you want to do is inspect and have a look at whether you're happy with how the carpet is sitting. Now for my mind, I think I'm a little bit low. So I'm gonna go and uh, just refix the back end and just tighten it up a bit. Okay, I'm happier with that. And of course, being that I'm happy enough to be below the level of my street, you can't really see it anyway. So now it's time to fix the timber to basically finish the job. Now when you are selecting your scrap timber, just have a think. For the outside, I'm using this Merbau screening that I happen to have lying around because it's very weather resistant. But for the inside, where the moisture content's not as much, I'm just using this piece of molding or skirting board that I have lying around. You don't really need to cut them to size as long as they're, I guess, shorter than the uh, opening of your garage door and you can use multiple pieces. So if you don't have a saw, but you've got you know, odds and ends lying around, keep in mind that once again, this should be basically all unseen. Just choose what you think is gonna work for you. It's probably also advisable to pre-drill if you can, just saves a bit of hassle when you're up there, especially with the hardwood. And always charge your battery first. Now it's time to uh, offer up our timber and a couple of clamps will definitely do you in good stead here if you are working by yourself. Next we can go ahead and screw on. Now once again consider the, the proper fixing to use. I've got some stainless steel decking screws left over and into this Merbau screening. That's almost the uh, perfect product to use.
just hold your driver straight, would you? You could pre-drill to get it in one, but in and out into this, which I think is softwood, works out enough for me. There you go, mate. How are you building now? Okay, so now the front's installed. It's just a matter of uh, trimming off any, or pulling off anything that dangles down. And then it's to install the back, and we'll test it out. So at this back side, we don't have the advantage of being able to use cl clamps to help us. Clamps. But, we do have the advantage of height. Fasten off of that all the way up. Make sure it covers both sides. This one's longer. And, uh, don't do what I've just done and put the screws too close to the wall to get an accurate fixing, but that's alright. I can now pre-drill and go again since it's tacked up there. Okay, so this time I'm going to pre-drill further out to uh, give me the, the clearance that I need. And I've also got an extension for my driver which will reduce the chances of me stripping this out like I did with the last one. That's what we want to see. And we can go ahead and take this out so we don't look like a complete amateur on film. Well, maybe we can't. Okay, so here's our finished product on the inside. I'm quite happy with that. And yes, uh, as I said before, it's invisible from the road. Let's check out the inside. Here we are inside along with the one that I had done previously. Looks relatively smart. So as we can see, it's not 100% elimination of draft. There's still a small region air can get in there, but I mean, be honest it's got to be 95 percent reduction so what i'm going to do i'm going to monitor now that i've got both installed see if the dust problem goes away if it continues then we will uh investigate filling those small gaps and that'll be another video but for now let's test out our door oh absolute shit. <laughs> i uh, use this carpet to uh loads of gravel onto previously and you can see what's going on but anyway that appears to be working okay let's check out the other side hasn't pulled out but at the same time it's not too loose let's put it down Once more. Doesn't look to be any pulling or tearing going on. So I'd say that's a success. So there you go, YouTube. That's how you can seal drafts on your roller garage door for next to no money.